I would need to be applicant to the security center. Um, I would. I work with uh, the web security research group, formerly Spider Man. And today we're going to talk about what's called in the rabbit hole execution flow based web application security testing. So we're going to follow. It's not as boring as it might sound, right? There's a lot of interesting stuff we're going to talk about. So we're going to follow Alice down the rabbit hole, and um, to, to kick this off, we talk about web scanners, since that's what we uh, web application security scanners, since that's and all we know. And there's stuff that we really like about web scanners, right? It, it, it automates the hell out of everything. Who wants to sit down at every form and put and type in? Oh, I just try this XSS. I try this SQL. I don't want to sit there and try all this, right? So automation is perfect for that. And that's why we have this entire, you know, that's why, that's why I have a job, right, is so that we can do this automation stuff. And it's really fast, right? It's, you know, the, the fact that I can sit there and just make all those tons of requests in, you know, many milliseconds, right? I can do this really fast and yeah, yeah, great, but Yeah, but, 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 but we hate them because the, the attack surface is up there, right? If you're testing a web app, you know, I don't know if you guys have paid attention lately, but, you know, how many of you guys have... Uh, Ever heard somebody say, you know, I just want to put the URL in, click the go button to get the results? Anybody? 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 Yeah, lots of people I deal with tend to want to do that. And it's very difficult to kind of reiterate <coughs> why that just won't work that way. And quite frankly, you know, scanners rely on crawlers, and crawlers process links and buttons, click buttons and stuff, and that's just not quite going to be effective going forward. Yeah, and, and, but but even though it's not effective, right? There's there's still a place for it. So what, you know what we're trying to say throughout this talk is that you know we're not trying to say we're going to get rid of automation, right? That this is we're talking about how can you know how can we take the smartness of, of people and kind of bring it more into a scanner, right? So I'm not I'm not we're not talking about product specific stuff. We're just going to talk about you know how can I take the human element and move it into the automation and still use all that stuff to uh, you know make security scanners a lot better. Well, because quite frankly, you know, uh, plumbers have tools, mechanics have tools, heck, tape man made tools, that's why we're here. Um, so there's a lot of things that humans can't do. Humans can't handle the uh, coverage scalability and speed. You just can't work as fast as a quad core multi processor machine. Um, you just can't. You know, humans can't handle this kind of complexity that we can do in, in, the, in code, which makes life a little bit more interesting as well. But so, you know, the whole idea here is that, you know, we're trying to take the, the human element, move it more toward into the scanners, and we need to force this stuff to evolve, right? Because everyone kind of does, as Rap was pointing out, you know, the the problem with, with the scanners is that, you know, they're just kind of clicking around going, doing some stuff. You know, how can we start incorporating what users are actually doing into what the scanners are doing and, and kind of use the stuff in tandem? So the question always becomes, so why did my scanner miss whatever, right? There's actually three reasons. And if you think there's more, you're wrong. Um, the reason number one is because there's a specific sequence of what we call flow of pages. You can't get to the confirm your registration page without putting in some details on the page beforehand. Right? Feel free to agree, disagree. You guys have all fallen asleep. There's coffee outside. Uh, there's also, whatever it is, requires special data to get there. Okay? You can't perform a ACH bank transfer without having the correct routing number. If, if you can, I'd like to know your bank. Um, and it's also possibly triggered by some client-side events, which is quite interesting. Yeah, so I mean, one of the uh, one of the apps that I've seen recently was the shopping cart. And you know, the traditional shopping cart is you've got page to page to page to page to page. But this shopping cart is all done in Ajax, right? So there's just a single page, and you're like, okay, I'm going to start buying stuff, and all, all the little stuff you can, all the little items you can buy comes up. Possibly go wrong. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? But, you know, the, the whole point is that not that they did it in Ajax, but the idea there is that you've got an entire workflow that's, you know, very much like the kind of Gmail experience where you just, you know, click on the inbox and it rewrites the page, and you click on the settings and it rewrites the page. You know, it's not, the, the web's moving away from the whole, I can make a request and I get a page back. I'm going to make a request and I get a page back. It's more like, uh, you know, a, series, a, a, set, a set of requests build a page, right? And uh, the scanners really haven't, Kept up with that as much as they should. It's a, it, it's complicated because you know it, the, the scanners kind of follow the, the proxy replay kind of mentality, right? So you know they, they they make some kind of crawl request and they get the response and they're like, okay, okay, now I've got this you know the request response pair. Now I'm going to audit it. But you know in the shopping cart example, if you've got any kind of nonces or anything like that in there, once you make that one request and you do keep the variables the same, 
you're in trouble, right? Because the nonce is a one-time use token. That's the whole point. If I can keep that request and keep auditing it, and it's going to make valid requests, your security feature of stopping, you know, CSERP isn't working. So you don't know, do CSERP protection, right? Yeah, everyone's <laughs> website does that, right? <laughs> but um, so it, you know, we need a way to, you know, force the the, the execution of these entire flows that we're calling them, and then audit the request that kind of happened on the fly. So we're going to talk about this totally radical, radical, air quotes, uh, testing methodology. Because I think any tool can blindly hack away. It really takes some intelligence to strike at something strategic, surgically and accurately. Uh, you know, taking a sledgehammer or a 25 pound sledge to uh, an app doesn't really require all that much intelligence. But getting something that makes it meaningful uh, actually does require uh, a bunch of good intelligence. So you have to actually have some better results, otherwise you're just you're wasting CPU cycles. And quite frankly, what we're going to try to teach you guys and go through is the formalization of application mapping, uh, the, sort of the basics of uh, execution flow diagrams, the concept we're introducing, and some of the uses of EFDs. Yeah, so, you know, what we're not trying to, we're not trying to say that, oh, we're going to invent, you know, user action capture or something like that, right? You know, what we're trying to say is, you know, Selenium exists, you know, that it's all sorts of web automation, that's cool. But no one's really sat down and tried to formalize, you know, what it means to have all this stuff recorded and come up with a, you know, a way to, to, to use that information more than just automation or automating specific user events, right? So, you know, how, what, are we, what are we even talking about? So, application process mapping, all right, that's going to be step one for us. And quite frankly, the idea that uh, I started talking about about a year and a half ago at a uh, QA conference was that, you know, I think QA testers are better suited to test web apps than security testers. All right, let me get a quick show of hands. Who, who agrees with me? Who thinks I'm stupid for saying that? Nice. <laughs> um, here's, why, here's the reasons why, okay? The QA teams generally know the app. They have something called a functional specification. We do not when we test. They test for known functions, so they test for stuff they know is supposed to be there. They know the way the app works, right? They have, they can tell you that they've covered the entire application, all the functionality, if they're when they're done, because they can go down the list of requirements and say, I've tested this, tested this, tested this, tested this, and they tend to do these things that I call highlighting key business logic, which is really hard if you don't know the app. So well, on so, the flip side, yeah. So on the flip side, right? So when I go to do a pen test, one of the first things I have to do is say, okay, I need to learn what the hell this app does. So I need to sit down and go go through it, find out what the important flows are, where are the credit cards, where is the database access, stuff like that. This is all stuff that you know the QA may know, and, and basically will say, hey, you know, I know where the credit cards are. I have a functional spec. I enter it here, and I know that's a credit card. You know. So, you know, I, I, I have to sit down and, you know, once I identify the app and I know what it's doing, I say, okay, well, now i got to find out, you know, the weird flows. How do I access, you know, page B from this other thing and try to find a weird, you know, path between create and attack, right? And if I'm using a scanner, right, I have to rely on the, if I, if I don't have time to sit down and go through the entire app, I have to have some kind of automated technique doing it, right? So I'm relying on a crawler. I'm relying on, you know, hopefully some, there's a little bit of luck involved in, in relying on the crawler, right? I mean, this is kind of what we're talking about. It's not necessarily going to exercise your shopping cart or your ACH you know, transfer correctly if you don't give it all the right data. Um, so I think there's something to be learned from QA. All right? and even if you don't agree with me, I'm going to make you convert. Because security analyst tools today aren't equipped properly to test highly complex applications. You guys agree? Yeah, right? As we start to evolve web apps, with this idea of Web 2.0, I don't care if you love it or hate it, okay? It's here. It, it's going to continue to grow. And the more complex web apps get, the more client-side stuff we do, the more action-based stuff that happens, the less effective automation becomes unless we do something. This is that something. There's a couple missing pieces. It's understanding the application, right? I've talked to hundreds of web apps, like pen testers and you know security analyst types. First, what's the first thing you do? Pop in the URL and start banging away. Like, don't you want to learn the app? Why bother? I'm just going to break it. Okay? So functionally mapping the application I think is important because it helps you highlight exactly how the application flows. You're well, also missing testing. It's important to talk about, too. You know, it's, it's not just covering the execution flows. It's 